post the issue of hindenburg gautam adani has very boldly scrapped 2.5 billion dollars share offering which in a way is the first victim of the hindenburg's attack on adani group but what's in store for adani going forward post this hindenburg's report and the developments that are taking place over a span of time considering all of them everyone is curious to know what's in store for adani what next for gautam adani and what next for his embattled empire given these questions we try to answer them with as much information as i can provide to you all according to me for gautam adani it is no strange to any ambush because in 1998 he was kidnapped and then reportedly released for a multi million dollar ransom that apart in 2008 he was at taj mahal hotel in mumbai during the terrorist attack and spent a night hiding in the basement and luckily had his way out looking at these two incidents what we can say here is god was kind enough with him in both these extreme scenarios and god has granted him fresh life now for about one month he has been facing an assault of different kind not on his person per se but on the conglomerate that bears his name subsequent to hindenburg's report on feb 1st bloomberg reported that credit swiss had stopped accepting adani forms bonds as collateral for margin loans to its private banking clients of course we all know that subsequent to hindenburg's report adani's share prices till recently have fallen almost to the extent of about 60% of their peak values in terms of market capitalization slight rebounds in his stocks could be seen for the past 2 days but the trend needs to be watched very keenly because the valuations seemingly are steeply high even now with the corrections that have taken place in adani groups respective stocks considering the kind of fundamentals and the projections that each of his group company makes the prices of the bonds of the adani group have taken a big hammering though what comes next is uncertain but adani has dispatched his executives around the world to reassure the nervous investors adani himself has reiterated that his balance sheet is very healthy with strong cash flows and secured assets and that their group has an impeccable track record of servicing debt but at this stage a threat to his empire does not appear existential because adani has been swimming through the troubled waters all throughout his career and now he is 60 years old and he being an able operator and his companies also own many valuable assets as we know they run some of the biggest ports plus a few in australia and a recent acquisition in israel and sri lanka and warehouse 30% of its grain operate a fifth of power transmission lines accommodate a quarter of commercial air traffic and produce a fifth of cement in india and his singaporean joint venture wise to be india's largest food company so these are the assets that he has acquired over a period of time through leveraged buyouts with limited equity support so his modus operandi happened to be acquiring expanding and diversifying into new businesses through leverage route that's where he has been raising good chunk of funds not only from the domestic institutions but also from the foreign banks and foreign financial institutions but on the part of equity he has been proved to be a big zero because he couldn't succeed in the equity markets and his maiden big fpo also bombed and gave an impression that adani group 
is not darling to any institutional investors or even to retail investors or for that matter for his own employees because in his recent FPO, none of these portions could get full subscription on their own. At this stage, though all are speculations, but no rating agency has yet reappraised the group's debt, which boasts an investment grade even now. And not even the Hindenburg's allegations so far led compilers of global stock market indices to drop Adani forms from their benchmarks. And one of the index makers, FTSE Russell, has said that it does not at this point of time intend to take any action and another MSCI is expected to weigh in soon. Of course, there are some knock-on effects on firms like LAC and State Bank of India, but those knock-on effects are not life-threatening but definitely painful for public sector institutions like LAC and State Bank of India. Because the chairman of PSU institutions came out and said that they have no threat per se at this juncture on the part of the fall of Adani Group stocks. But subsequently, the threat has become apparent because their share prices, I mean to say the share prices of LIC and even SBA declined by about 8% and 5% respectively in the month of February. According to some foreign agencies, at this point of time, the Indian institution's exposure towards Adani Group is almost to the tune of $24 billion, which is equivalent to around 0.5% of all loans across the Indian banking sector. That is one school of story. The second school of story is that the total exposure of Adani, both on balance sheet and off balance sheet of various group companies put together will be equivalent to 1% of all loans across the Indian banking sector. We all know that foreign investors are not taking any chances at this point of time because the Indian stocks have been constantly underperforming other emerging markets since the Hindenburg report. Of course, the compliance obsessed Western multinationals may think twice before forging any new relationships with the Indian tycoons going forward. Amid all this, Adani himself was in Israel and he took officially the ownership of port in Haifa, which he has acquired in 2022 for 1.2 billion and he has been trying to doubtlessly reassure all of his worldwide stakeholders with a message that his form and his finances are very well intact. Not just that, when the world is calling Adani group as a debt ridden group to neutralize that kind of statement givers, Mr. Adani and his group have been trying constantly to give an impression that they have been prepaying some of the loans to the banks. For example, Adani Ports and Special Economic Zone, APSEZ, paid SBI Mutual Fund a 1000 crore loan in the form of a commercial paper. And also, Adani Ports had declared that it would prepay a debt of nearly 5,000 crores in the year starting April in a bid to improve its net debt to earnings. Besides this, it's the company's statement that the group prepaid loans of $1.11 billion and got the pledged shares released ahead of the maturity in September 2024. So, with the prepayments, what Adani tried to do is, when his share prices got battered, there to rescue his shares from the threat of selling by the lenders, he has prepaid some loans and got released his pledged shares and freed his shares from the threat of sale by the lenders. So, one side, Adani is trying to safeguard his stakeholding from losing by prepaying the debts to those lenders whoever have given money to him 
by taking pledge of his shares on the other side he has been trying to restructure rejuggle outstanding loans in such a way that with any kind of fresh fresh raisings he would be in a position to pay them as and when they fall due this is what the strategy adani has been adopting at this point of time what lies ahead adani group is planning to prepay a 500 million dollar loan due next month to a group of banks that includes barclays standard chartered and deutsche bank for these prepayments the group is continuing to speak with global bond investors to raise funds as one can gather the information now of adani bonds which have been issued in various series and also through various companies to various investors have got maturities spanning from 2023-24 to almost 2050 so adani's empire which got created purely on debt has availed almost 9.3 billion dollars in the form of bonds issued to various banks and investors overseas and those repayments structured in a way that they fall due from 2023-24 to 2050 so again here when we look at the operating margins of adani group the adani groups operating margins have dwindled in the recent past to 3.6% so at an operating margin of 3.6% at this point of time servicing the debt is a big question mark for adani group through its operations though one can make rosy projections but those projections should have some kind of precedent if we go by the precedent of adani group in the past adani has a maximum of 7.16% in terms of operating margin so with that kind of operating margins with that kind of conglomerate kind of setup that he has the, the long gestation areas in which his business has when we look at comprehensively the operating margins improvement may take substantial time for him to service the interest going forward we also try to look at his return on capital the return on capital on the part of adani group at this point of time is just 3.18% and these returns are not even giving back the cost of capital not just that even if we see adani's debt load the percentage from his net debt at this point of time is 82.31% his group is loaded with debt which is substantially high and his interest coverage ratio is just 1.44% that is to say he is skating on thin ice that is on the debt part adani has to depend on constant raising of money through debt otherwise he will not be in a position to service his debt so to repay debt he has to borrow debt and he has to service the debt that is to say borrow from peter to pay paul on the part of equity with the debacle of the recent issue any new issuance from the group in the nearest future seems to be doubtful going forward dependence on debt constant plans for raising debt to pay their debts should be the strategy and they need to succeed in that strategy for their survival and for their existence and for proving themselves as credible players in the infrastructure field that they have chosen as their business model hope the information is useful thank you very much for your patient hearing